to the Marvel Art Livestream. My name is Todd Knock. I'm a professional comic book artist. Maybe you've seen my work in a lot of Spider-Man comics, Amazing Spider-Man. Currently, I'm drawing the Gwen Stacy series, uh, the story of Spider-Man, or Peter Parker's girlfriend before they met. So it's high school Gwen, back in the early days of the Marvel Universe, as she gets into some Nancy Drew-like adventures. And then I've also done a lot of variant covers for a lot of different comics, 2099, uh, Avengers, and today I'll be drawing Captain Marvel. We're going to draw Carol Danvers, a character I'm not, I am quite familiar with drawing. I've drawn her on a number of covers here and, and some different stories. So we're going to draw Carol Danvers here, and I'm going to show you how I approach drawing Carol from head to toe in, in my illustrations here. So you're welcome to draw along with me, and uh, I'll try to share with you all my tips and tricks as to what I do when I draw. I want to say thanks to everyone watching here on the Marvel Twitter, the Marvel YouTube, and the Marvel Facebook. If you're on Twitter and, and YouTube, you can follow me at, at Todd Knock. And um, if, you're on, if you're on the uh, Facebook, you can find me at Art of Todd Knock. So i um, so glad you're here. We're going to have some fun drawing today. So we're going to start off here. And we're going to, I'm going to use a red mechanical pencil here, uh, more for demonstration purposes. So you can see kind of the underdrawing and the, the, uh, the, the structure I use to build a figure. And we're going to do kind of a nice kind of cool sort of um, kind of a style guide shot. Something you might see uh, in like the old, those, those classic uh, Marvel handbook comics that they, they used to do back in the 1980s. I had those as a kid and they were always so fun to go through and see the different cool shots of the characters standing there and get all the details of the characters' costumes. I, I still use those for reference. I still have all those comics uh, from back in the day, even found the old, all the even older issues that I had missed before I started collecting. So, um, so we're starting here with uh, Carol's head, and we're going to try to get the whole head-to-foot image here. So um, I might have to slide the board up and down so you can see all the detail here. So, um, so we're gonna start with the head, have the neck, got the shoulders there, and then we gotta have the, just the basic torso to the waist. And we have her hips. I'm gonna do a lot of adjusting here. This is the great thing about uh, the, for, the foundational stage, getting the structure going, is that we can just kind of make things fit where we need to. We can always make adjustments. Now you're welcome to draw on whatever paper you have and whatever art tools you have. So if you don't have a red mechanical pencil, that's totally cool. Use whatever pencils, pens, crayons you have. That, that's totally cool. So the main thing is to just kind of draw along if you want and have fun. Or if you just want to hang out and watch and chat, so glad you're here to do that as well. Let's all just have fun together. So, um, so I got the torso here into the hips. And then we're going to start to, we're going to give her kind of a nice wide stance. She's kind of got a nice, get, get the, the thighs down to the knees and then down to the feet here. Kind of a nice wide stance. She is standing bold here in our environment. Don't know if I have time to draw backgrounds, but we can always imagine what background she's in, whether it's a alpha flight satellite, maybe a airplane hangar, a Kree warship, the Avengers headquarters. She can stand just about anywhere, anywhere we want her to. Heck, she was friends with the X-Men and the Star Jammers for a while, so we could put her out there in the Shi'ar outpost of some sort on the Star Jammer ship, the X-Men mansion. Well, heck, now they're on Krakoa, so maybe she can't go visit the X-Men like she did back in the day. So we uh, have the these kind of uh, very oblong, very elongated ovals almost, down to like softball-type knees. And then we pull down to the, uh, to the feet here. We'll get to more details with the graphite pencil here in just a moment. This is just the very basic structure, very, very basic. Now, most uh, uh, when we're drawing a normal person, 
it's an average about seven heads high. And aren't we, we use heads as a size guide. Um, for comics, we kind of exaggerate the form. So sometimes we can bump it up to a, an eight or even an eight and a half head high, high care, a figure. Uh, just for more, uh, the exaggeration can bring more of a dynamic feel to the character. Um, so uh, that's the one thing I enjoy about comics is that it's, it's kind of somewhat grounded in reality, but we also get to get really exaggerated and, and, and larger than life. So let's see, we gotta get some arms going here. Like I said, we, we will come in with graphite pencil, a regular graphite pencil for more, for more details. Gonna put in that sash and she's got that, that buckle there, that, that medallion with a little eight pointed star on there. We'll, we'll figure out where her sash, how that falls here in a moment. Right now, I wanna make sure we get these arms uh, roughed in here. And we're gonna have her arms up and she's powering up. She's powering up a charge. So we're gonna bring from the shoulder down and the elbow kind of around here, the midway here. So we're gonna kind of angle that elbow up. So that lets me know about how far to bring the upper arm down to her elbow and the forearms are gonna come out this way. I'm gonna just got those big chunky cuffs. I love big chunky cuffs on a on a superhero. I just think those are so much fun to draw. Really breaks up the the flow of the arm there. It gives us a really fun detail. And then we've got her her fists here. So I start with a little rectangle and then these little rectangles for each individual finger. Then we have her knuckles there. And we put a little thumb right there. That kind of gets a fist started and then we'll have some sort of energy effect around here as she powers up her, her Cree powers. So um, let's uh, bring the other arm down. So we have her kind of facing to the uh, left a little bit. She's kind of angled to the left for a little bit of a, a little more, a uh, little more motion, a little less static. So again, the elbows kind of, Right about where the hips or the waist is, I should say, just above the hips. The waist is about where the elbows come down to, roughly. And we're going to then from the elbow bring the forearms out here for the other hand. Now, if I'm going a little fast, I do apologize. We have about an hour here. So I want to make sure we can get the full illustration done. But you're always welcome to come back to the uh, Marvel YouTube uh, channel and uh, or on the Instagram live, or uh, I'm sorry, not Instagram, Facebook, on the Facebook page and uh, rewatch. Marvel is kind enough to save all of their live streams for a rewatch. So you can come back and watch afterwards and you can uh, pause and play as you go. So, um, so it can be a resource here for you. Like I said, I have a lot of art videos on my YouTube channel. I didn't really say that. I said I do have a YouTube channel. You can find me on YouTube. And I have a lot of art videos, and you can do the same there. So we've got this other hand charged up. And then we'll figure out some sort of power effect here momentarily. Uh, right now, let's uh, get a little more detail here in the face and get that hair flowing. So we have her body, as we said, kind of pointing off to our left. Let's angle the face a little over to the right, like she's looking up to the sky, like she's a, she's charging up and maybe she's about to take off and she's going to go tussle with some, some bad guy. Maybe Thanos, how about Terax? Maybe some sort of otherworldly, maybe the Supreme Intelligence is getting some some scheme going again and she's got to get involved. So with the face, we have that center line. So we're, we've turned the face a little bit. So we're turning that center line right from the center of her head. We're turning that eye line right through here. Through halfway from the top of the head to the chin is the eye line, halfway from the Eye line to the chin roughly is the nose line, then roughly halfway from the nose line to the chin can be the mouth line. And since she's turned the head, we know that's where the side of the head is. And we have an ear right there. 
don't know if we'll see it because we're going to give her long hair, so it might cover up that ear. But I always like to know where each facial feature is so that if I see it or if it's covered up, at least I know I've structured it out to the best of my ability. Let's see, we've got some eyebrows here. And then the nose, we know where that nose is supposed to go, thanks to our guidelines. So we got the tip of the nose, some nostrils. Now, when I get to the graphite here, we'll have much cleaner, tighter detail. This is just kind of just a rough placement of where everything's at to make sure uh, everything fits. And then we'll uh, we'll get the um, we'll get some nice cleaner detail. That's why I'm using the red pencil here is for structure uh, to make sure everything fits where it needs to be. So we have her collar, these little buttons on her collar. So let's uh, work in the hair here. So hair is often parted on the side. So we're going to come right here on the side and bring some hair down. Again, just working out these shapes. Bringing that hair up off the skull. We're just going to let this hair kind of flow about. Because, you know, the ionic energy of the power up is causing, you know, all sorts of uh, gravity wells and uh, who knows what all other science, su science and pseudoscience stuff, you know, comic book science stuff to make the hair flow in, in fun, beautiful, exciting and interesting ways. So I'm just kind of bringing the lines down in kind of curvy, cascady ways. Now, I've done this a lot of times, so I have a lot of practice. I like to start from the top of my head and top of my head, top of her head, top of the head I am drawing. So I, I pull down and around and let it kind of flow and twist and turn as needed, as desired. Can always change up. So I get the nice chunky shapes I need. And then I can put in the nice hair striations or uh details as as desired maybe even some kind of fl flows over her shoulders now she's got these uh these seams that run from kind of like the armpit area up to the neck and then we have her emblem which is critical to have on here so i like to start with a diamond shape first then the two I like to do the four major points, the north, the south, the east, and the west. And then we do the little smaller points to make the eight-pointed uh, star shape based out of each corner there. And that gives me the uh, fairly clean and uh, fairly, fairly accurate structure. And then we have her yellow stripes that go across to her shoulder and it pulls off the point, the corner, and the other point up and then down over the shoulder. Again, we're going to come in with graphite pencil here real soon to put in these details so they're far more clear. So up, 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 then down over the shoulder. It actually angles back up around the other side. All right, and the other detail, oh, and then we'll, we'll have her, her um, the, the trails of her, her, uh, her sash blowing here behind her, blowing and flowing around behind. Just gonna kind of widen out this stance a little bit more for extra, extra boldness. Just for a little more dynamic marble action. Okay, so now that I've done the, the basic shapes here, I can now come in with my regular graphite pencil. This is an HB pencil. A number two lead pencil is the same kind. And we'll, we'll do the uh, nice clean pencil lines now. And we can get these details in. And you can kind of see the direction I was heading as we, uh, as we uh, 
build on the, the foundation that I sketched out. So I consider the bangs and how the hair kind of flows and pulls. And then we're going to work in some of the space. I like to work foreground to background. So whatever overlaps, I like to draw the thing that's in front and then work my way to what's behind. Just makes it a little bit easier for me to kind of keep up with the dimensional dimensionality. That's a very challenging word. I think it all the time, but I rarely say it. How she fits in the dimension of where she's occupying. I like to make sure I know where my foreground is, my middle ground, and my background. It's like her bangs here are in the foreground, but her but this part of her hair moves behind her, so that's technically the background. Or at least it's more background than the, the front part of her hair. I can at least say that much. So her hair overlaps her ear, but we see a little bit of that earlobe down to the jawline there. Then we can pull that jaw right around to the chin. Have a nice little head turn here. Like something just got her attention. A little trim to that collar. Gonna put some cascading hair. Down, bunching up onto her shoulders. The other side of the neck, let's see. And then we have this hair kind of whipping around. Because power effects will do that to your hair. Whether you have hex powers like. Uh, um, Scarlet Witch or telekinetic powers like Jean Grey. Once you start powering up, the hair is going to flow. It's just, it's just, it's just the way it is when you're a superhero. You don't need a wind machine. You just got to power up. And then here comes that flowy, the flowing locks. Okay, so let's. Uh, Start to work in more of her shoulders and her torso. Just picking the right lines that I want to uh, delineate all the shapes and form. I'm gonna run a seam down to the tip of her star there, like that. Get those collar buttons dropped in right there. around the shoulder and down the forearm or down the upper arm to the forearm is what I mean to say. Excuse me. Then we pull down to her waist. Then we get the other shoulder, then forearm or upper arm down to the forearm, to the elbow there. Let's go ahead and finish off this uh, right arm. A few little wrinkles there where the, the costume kind of bunches up. Let's figure out this fist here. So I know that thumb is in the is in front of those fingers. So I want to start with that thumb, a little rectangle. And we pull down to that meaty part of the hand. Then we have the knuckles here. Knuckle, 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 knuckle. 
to the finger, and another finger. So it's like little rectangles that connect. And the other part of the palm. And the back of the hand there. Maybe we'll even see that little bit of that yellow kind of rectangle thing on the back of her gloves she often has. I think that's a kind of cool little effect, a little costume detail. And then we're going to draw in this cuff, that chunky cuff. But add little details like little seams. You know how you wear your winter gloves and it has that little seam that runs up and down the sides of the fingers and the thumb? I think that's a fun little detail to put into the gloves of certain characters that that would make sense for. Maybe not for Spider Man, but definitely for a character like, oh, I don't know, like, uh, well, Captain Marvel for one. Captain America would be another good one. Especially even when he's wearing kind of those those chunkier, almost like a work glove sort of look. All right, let's see. Let's come back over here and let's put add the detail to her emblem. Then we just do the outer lines. Don't have to do the because I broke it down into separate shapes. But now, actually, I want to clean up that line right there. I want to make that look a little nicer. Bottom point. And we have the east. There we go, that eight point star. And then the stripes that run from that star over to the shoulder. So we have those, the red, the yellow, and then the blue, if this were to be colored. You can do the mirror image effect over to the other shoulder. So it angles up to the shoulder and then down around the shoulder. Just like that. So a little bit of kind of the rib cage there, just a little bit, just a little indication. And start to flare from the waist out to the hips. Before we move this far, let's uh, while we're still up here at the top, let's uh, work on this fist. Now, because this fist is drawn at a different angle, the fingers are now in the foreground. So I'm gonna gonna start blocking these in, remembering that the fingers go up and then bend over and then they tuck in for the fist, so we don't see the the full finger. A little wrinkle there across her glove. From the cloth bunching up, we have the knuckles there. And we have that little yellow stripe that runs on the back of her glove. And the, her palm, and then that thumb tucks right back here behind these fingers. That gives us her left fist. And we have the back of the hand there. We have this that chunky, bunchy glove that I love so much. Few little wrinkles there, and then we have the big cuff, that chunky cuff. Then I just can fold the cloth, how it kind of might bend and fold around. So a few little wrinkles there. Now we can uh, take, we can, can, can connect her fist to her arm as we draw in the forearm. All right, now that we can resume here. Uh, we have her medallion here that goes on her sash. So we'll do a nice kind of, it's circular, but because we're kind of at a little bit of an angle, we're gonna give it a little bit more of an oval uh, because of the perspective here. So we have 
the medallion and then the kind of the ridge, the, the side to it. Like it's a disc. And then we have her, the same emblem here in the inside. So I'll use my red pencil again. So we make that diamond. Then we do that whole uh, compass thing. So north, south, east, and west. And then the, uh, the little extra, the smaller points. The northwest, northeast, southeast, southwest points. And then we can just go right around the perimeter of that to get a nice clean Captain Marvel emblem. And then her sash goes over her hips. It's, uh, you know, it's cloth, so it, it kind of bunches and wrinkles. It bunches up and wrinkles around because it's all kind of cinched here by uh, her, her medallion. So we're going to create these little, uh, I don't know if it's, well, little's the right word. We're going to create these, these chunks of cloth. How it all bunches here and then spreads out to the sash that goes around her hips. And some wrinkles here at the pants where the, the, the thighs meet up with the torso. Well, let's see, we have these, the ends of the sash that flow out. So we're going to do those first, and then we can draw, finish in the thigh behind. So now we can head down to the knees. So we know where that knee shape is because we drew in that little softball shape. Slide the paper up so you can see how this foot turns out. So we kind of curve from the calf muscles down here to the ankles. She's got these segmented boots, so we're going to have to figure out those segments here. Right now, we'll just get the basic shape. So from the ankle here, so we have that little ankle piece right there. We can flare down to the ground. It's almost like a triangular shape, like a right angle. So we have the right angle there, and then the Opposite angle right there. About halfway down, we're going to bring a line and kind of create this. If we could see it in its entirety, it would be a kind of an oct a, a hexagon shape, like one, two, one side, two side, three side, then four up there, and then five and six we can't see on the other side of the foot. And then so you can then separate the heel and then the toe area there. And then the the front part, the shin guard part of the boot, like that. And then for this part of the thigh, or this thigh, we'll Pull from the hips, angling down to the knee. Kind of curves down and around to the knee. Because that softball shape, we can just add a little couple of lines right here to indicate the knee. Then from the knee, kind of flares out for the calf muscle. Kind of a shin bone right there. And then we have this side of the, of the lower leg going down to the ankle, which is nice that her boots have these segmented parts so we can just draw in an ankle like that. 
There's an ankle on the other side. Now the face, the foot's kind of facing us a little more. It's a little more angled towards us. So it's kind of a different shape. So we have the heel from the ankle come down. Still thinking of that, that kind of right angle, right triangle type of shape. So it's like the right angle there. Now it's very loosely described as such. And then the far angle on the up opposite side. So this gives us the inside of the foot. About halfway down, we can create that uh, top of the foot plate. And then because of the angle, we can't quite see the entirety of the this part of the boot right there because of the angle, and that's okay. That's just the way the angles go. And then we have her, her shin guard part, and then a little back of the boot right there. Then another little kind of panel right there for flexibility of the foot. All right, now sometimes she has some seams that run her, on her costume, and I, I dig drawing seams. So we're going to add those seams here. First, I'm going to rough, rough in the shape with my, my pencil. So about halfway on this stripe here, we're going to kind of come around and down to that ab section. And then just below the navel, like if that's the, the belly button right there, we're going to bring that right around there. And then she has these little seams that run across where her ribs would be. And she also has some knee guard seams. So we'll rough those in just right over the knees. So let me grab my graphite pencil again. And we will darken in those lines. We want to curve those lines around her body. Don't want to make them too flat because the, there's a curvature of her body. You know, she's organic shapes so we don't want them to be just straight lines we want them to curve just a little bit because carol has form and mass maybe run that seam from the bottom of the star down to the bottom there and then we can um, add the little knee seams which is kind of like a elongated hexagon so flat at the top and then two points off to the side do the same, flat at the top, angling them down, and then back to the bottom there. Okay, oh, and now that we have the legs drawn in, we can continue these, uh, the sash um, trails, the ends of the sash, as they flow behind her. And we're gonna make them a little darker, there's so a little less light getting to them. So we know the slash flows behind, flowing behind the legs. And then this one trail of the sash is coming way over here. I'm going to put some wrinkles through the sash because it is cloth and it's all going to wrinkle up as it flips and flows and flits about because she's powered up. And the sash is going to obey the same comic book rules as the hair. It's got a flit and float and flop about. A little set, uh, shadow underneath the sash there, like that maybe. Okay, so now we need to um, finish her facial features. Actually, I have to start them. So I'm going to, because it's such a small image here, I'm not going to draw on the full nose. I'm just going to draw on the nostrils just to keep a nice clean face. So dark on that one far nostril and the nostril, nostril that's closer to us. Just a little tiny, little tiny line. Just real simple, keeping it clean. In fact, I can, if I take my click eraser here, can kind of erase that nose guideline. And we'll see just by illustrating those nostrils there, our brain fills in 
the the bridge, the bridge of the nose. Because we know what a human face looks like. So our, our brain fills in the gaps. Because comic book drawing is about representation. We are representing life here, the real world, as well as fantasy at the same time. So we get some nice dark eyelashes here, little upper eyelid, eyebrow. Do the same on this side. Kind of arc these eyebrows here. Carol is determined. She's about to, she's getting charged up and going to get ready to take off. Deliver a beat down on some evil entity. So got that, and then we have her the iris, which is the color part of the eye. And right in the middle of each iris is the pupil, the black part of the eye. Maybe a little bit of cheekbone right there. We furrow the brow just a smidge. Now let's get our mouth drawn in. So we have the upper lip here. The lower lip. A little darker underneath the bottom part of her lip for a little bit of shadow. All right. A few more hairs here underneath. Creates a little bit of a shadow, so it, it lets the front part of her hair, where the light's really hitting, pop out in the front, and then further back, where less light hits, kind of gives us a framing sort of situation. Now let's uh, let's draw these power-ups. We got these fists ready to get charged up, but we ain't got no power flowing through those through those fists yet. So. Um, so I've got this kind of rough guideline of a circle. So what I'll do is just take my pencil here and I'm just gonna kind of create a nice jig jaggedy sort of energy effect. Like energy coalescing around her hand. Just go all the way around. A few little sparks of energy popping off from the main chunk of energy. This just is kind of this a sphere of energy. Maybe a few little little dots here in, on the inside as well. Just kind of break it up. So that's one. We'll do the same for this side. Kind of starting at the wrist and then just kind of sketching in in a jig jaggedy sort of fashion. You can make power signatures in so many different ways. You can do curvy crackles, which are those, you know, those all those black dots that circle around certain characters. Um, we nickname those Kirby Crackles because Jack Kirby, Jack the King Kirby, who created and co-created so much of the Marvel Universe in the 1960s, especially. Fantastic Four, 
Incredible Hulk, X Men. Just so much. He he. Uh, Silver Surfer, Black Panther, etc. He he really kind of defined that 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 those big black dot Kirby crackles. These aren't quite Kirby crackles, but it's in that sort of that vein, that nature, that that spirit, if you will. All right. So now we got her. Her hands charged up, and so her her costume is red on top here, the red collar and red gloves, red boots, red sash. She has the yellow star and stripes, and the yellow seam and buttons, and then the blue part. The rest of the costume is blue. Let's uh let's give that a little bit of shading here, so that we really get the idea of the of the different color for her her blue uniform. Some uh. Adding heavier shadow at the bottom part of her arm. So the light's kind of coming from above, but her fists are also kind of casting a bit of a light as well. So a thinner kind of shadow here. So we have like this reflected light from her energy power up. If this was going to be colored by one of Marvel's stable of awesome colorists. Rochelle Rosenberg is the one I work with the most. All those covers I showed you, she colored. Um, a lot of the comic books I work on. She is incredible. You know, she would maybe put some orange here from the orange power up, but then blue here, and then maybe a reflected light back here. So this is a little further away, so it's a little darker on the inside. And this is just kind of adding these uh, these shadow areas kind of gives uh, Carol some, some uh, dimension and weight. It kind of grounds her in reality. And through the chest here, on the bottom side, we'll uh, add some shadow because our main light source might be the sun or depending on what planet she's on, maybe one of multiple suns. Um, maybe if she's in a, a hangar or a satellite, she's uh, got you know fluorescent lighting for, coming from above or computer screens or something like that. So we'll add some to the, uh, some darks to the top of the kind of the, Abdomen rib cage area, and off to the side here. Here in this underarm part area between the chest and the arm here, there's going to be less light getting over there, so we'll have more of a shadow. Kind of running down that center seam and down the sides of her abdomen. We'll add some shadow, some dark, darker parts of the costume. So it's a blue costume, but the black kind of gives us a, a little more weight to the character around this down through the side of Carol here. So we're leaving this outer trim open for like highlight or reflected light or reflection from the charge up, the power ups. So it gives the colorist uh, room to play with the color. The colorist can add highlight, the regular color. Uh, reflected light, charge up light. So the lower part of her pants here that we can just kind of almost fill this all the way in black because it's furthest away from the light source. It's kind of tucked away. It's underneath the medallion and sash. We can pull this uh, much like we did with the arm on the outer part of the thigh, a nice little thin dark line down to the knee. And for the inner part, again, leaving this gap open for all sorts of reflected light or um, charge up light. We have the kind of inner thigh here. And then for the knee, it's kind of that, for that bottom of the knee, that front part of the knee, I should say, to the shin. We'll just run this shadow right down the shin. Really gives strength to the character character's uh, leg here to really ground them. Also, it's a little further away from the light, so we can use more shadow here. Then run, running along this outer um, cav, we can do that same thing. So we have this continuous uh, line of reflected light running through there, and then the colors could drop blue in here. 
And then we'll have some deeper shadow here on the inner uh, calf muscle, still keeping that, bring that down to the boot, still keeping that. You could put some different color right in there, maybe orange through here, a light blue through here, and then regular blue right down the center. And we continue this all the way down to the foot. Hopefully that foot's in, in, in camera frame there. Down to the toe, but the inside of the foot, not getting as much light. So she has this red part to her boot, but then she has this blue with the black shadow here for the toe and for the heel. So let's come over here and let's uh, do the same for this arm, but reverse everything. It's mirror image. So outside of the arm, thinner line. Inside of the arm, we'll have a thicker shadow. See little wrinkles there at where the costume bunches up at the elbow. Little shadow from underneath that cuff. A little thinner for the upper part here because light coming from above, as well as we have the light source here, so it would affect there. A little darker on this side, on the bottom side. Not doing too many stri muscle striations because we don't want um, we don't want Carol to look like the Hulk. You know, she, she, she's super strong, but we don't have to show every muscle striation to a point where it looks overly rendered. And then here for the thigh, the same as this thigh, but reverse order, because this is now the outside of the leg, the thinner shadow line. And then the inside, thicker. We have that inner thigh muscle. Gives us just enough delineation of her musculature without over rendering. She Hulk. She Hulk might be a character that would be great for really rendering out all the dip, all this separate muscles. You know, just really just get her ripped because you know she's just built that way, much like the Hulk. Um, but for Carol. I don't think, I don't know if that's the way I personally would like to go. If you want to go that way, please feel free. That's the fun of doing art is you get to make the choices with your picture. Um, just as I'm getting to make these choices with my picture. So please feel free to make Carol as ripped as you want. So that center, right down the center of the shin there, that big bold shadow to really ground her. And then they have that inner calf and then the outer calf muscle. Just running right down along there, allowing my colorist that 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 reflected light area, and then we want to make sure we get the dark areas of the foot. So, outer part of the furthest part out of the foot, just run that line right through there, and then for the inner part of the foot, a little more dark color, dark shading, I should say. So it uh, matches the other side. Maybe I'll put a little shadow here underneath her just to give her a place to stand. Just shade right across. Then account for that sash flitting about. So bring it all the way out to there. Just erase some of these guidelines. I have a lot of guidelines on here, but that was just the nature of the instruction more so than actual illustration. But if I were to ink this, then we would just wipe out all those pencil lines once the inks were done. But this is just a tutorial video on just uh, how, to, how to pencil, how to do the pencil art. Brush away that eraser dust. So then I'll then I take my uh, signing pen, put my my autograph on here, and today's date, which is the twenty eighth of April, twenty twenty, and that's the illustration of Carol here. 
want to say thank you so much for watching here on, on Twitter and YouTube. And if you're on Twitter and YouTube, you can find me at Todd Knock. And thanks for watching on Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, you can find me at, at uh, The Art of Todd Knock. So gang, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. Hopefully you learned a tip or trick or two. And uh, yeah, I'm so glad we got to spend some time here drawing. It's a lot of fun to draw Carol Danvers here, AKA Captain Marvel. Uh, so yeah, I hope you had a lot of fun and I hope you are uh, continuing to draw. So remember, it's, it's always uh, about having fun. So I'm Todd Nock and you keep on drawing, keep having fun. Take care, everybody.